Meanwhile, in Watchfield Village, Oxfordshire, the local citizens prepare for a long siege. It's perhaps to be expected that the people of Watchfield, particularly the older ones, don't like the idea of the festival one little bit. The general reaction is pure, unadulterated shock and disgust. It was a bit odd to see police wandering around because that was part of the deal. We had to have police on site. I remember once somebody, some naked guy, standing in, fr in front of three policemen directing a hundred hippies holding hands, dancing around them in, a, in an anti-clockwise direction to sort of, you know, take away all their bad vibes. I mean, it was all light-hearted, you know. And we actually played for something like seven hours that night, and there were, there were maybe 20,000 people, and they just did not stop. It was an all-night party, right through till dawn, till uh, the blisters on my fingers got too, too much to handle. It felt a bit artificial. It's probably because it was. It didn't... It didn't it, it, because it had this sort of government sanction and it had been allocated a, a spot at this airfield, it didn't have quite the same feeling of spontaneity as some of the other festivals. It felt a little odd. At Watchfield, the freaks, mystics and nomads had been given space to do as they pleased. But it was on the government's terms and not a particularly inspiring sight. The search continued for a spiritual home for the free festival movement. 